Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. So don't do nothing but worry about getting some weapons. Don't worry about plowshares. Don't worry about pruning hooks. Get some swords and spears. And even a little weak country, North Korea, relatively speaking, is a weak country. But they trying to get the big weapon. So they can say they strong. India and Pakistan, a few years ago when Bill Clinton was president of this country, they tried, they tried to keep it out of people's hands, and even if they get it, they don't want to, don't let nobody know you got it. So they knew Pakistan and India both had attained nuclear capabilities. Look it up in the news. Both of them said, just like North Korea doing that time, we're going to test it. We're going to test. That's why they mad at them. Every time they're getting ready to act like they're going to test something, Everybody upset, right? Because that's just another one and another one and got it, right? But I remember when Pakistan and India, they had it for a little bit, but they was keeping it closed door. Both of them wanted to get it because they neighbors. One get it, the other one say, I gotta get it. Then they both say they're gonna test. They both say, look, we getting ready to test. We're gonna show the world we got it. Don't mess with us. Pakistan did it one day. Bill Clinton said, no, don't do it. Don't do it. They said, skip you, Bill. They tested, showed the world they had a nuclear capability. The next day, India said, we gonna test out. Don't do it, don't do it. Skip you, Bill. India tested. Let everybody know we got it. So don't come to us too crazy. Because we can test some stuff up now. That's what he means. These are not great. Superpowers are they? They relatively weak countries where on a ground war, they wouldn't stand a chance. Neither one of them would stand a chance against America, right? But on when you get the nuclear capabilities, hey, you can say, I might not win, but you ain't gonna win either. I'm gonna kill everybody. So that's what he mean. Let the weak say I'm strong. Verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Tither, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. He said, all the heathen mean nations. And the Lord gonna bring you down. Go ahead. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. See, that's where they gonna meet it. That's outside of Israel, outside of Jerusalem. That's another name. That's Jehovah Judge, another name for what, what's called Armageddon. See, Lord gonna get them all right there. Go ahead. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Uh-huh. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Uh-huh, he says, time now, go ahead. Come, get you down, for the press is full. Uh-huh. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. He said it, it, the world ain't got so wicked, it's, it's at the tipping point. So he got to intervene. If he don't intervene, they'll kill us all. Go ahead. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Mm -hmm. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. See, the Lord said, look, it's going to come a time. And this is it right here, what we're reading about. It's going to come a time when it's going to be a final decision made on who's going to run this earth. And it's going to be me, God is saying. Because he's a man of war. They think they know about war. God going to teach him a good lesson, one good time. And it's going to be over. And this is at the second coming of Jesus. That's why Jesus said, if those days don't be shortened, that should no flesh say. Then he told you how he's going to shorten them. He said, immediately out of tribulation, the sun and the moon going to get dark. And here come Jesus, right? Intervening, cutting the days short. The sun and the moon got dark. Well, we're reading about the same time because verse 15 said what? The sun and the moon shall be dark. Oh, the sun and the moon. So we, it's only one time that's going to happen, brother and sister. This is at the second coming of Jesus right here. So what we're reading about these nations and these arming themselves, that's the time we living in right now, before Jesus coming. This is another sign of his coming. Man's weapons of war versus the Lord. That's how this party go in. The sun and the moon going to be dark and go ahead. And the stars shall withdraw their shine. Then we read that in Matthew 24. Go ahead. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. Now here he come. Go ahead. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. Go ahead. And the heavens and earth shall shake. Mm -hmm. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. See, there that, that go his elect. He said he's going to shake up everything, but it's going to be hope for his people. 
And other people who not Israel who serve in the Lord like he instructed Israel, they're going to be okay. Then what? So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. See, from then on, the Lord going to be here, ruling this earth. Thy kingdom come. He going to make his will done in earth as it is in heaven. Go ahead. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, mm -hmm. and there shall no strangers pass through her See, anymore. See, strangers running it now. And it's not holy now. It's unholy because the, the whole earth in Jerusalem is filled with wickedness. They fighting over there like cats and dogs right now. But the Lord going to decide it final, finally at his second coming. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no stranger pass through her any more. Je uh, Psalm 2. See, the Lord been telling you about this. And he didn't let you know point blank, and that sounds really almost too incredible to believe that man is dumb enough to try to use some weapons on the creator. But they got some inventions that they think they can work with. It don't matter what. That's why they be showing you some movies about an, an alien coming back. But the alien is the Lord. And we made in his image. So how much alien is he? But he got the power. Psalm 2, he going to let you know. It's all about who going to run it, though. And you think you can tell God just because he didn't let you run it your way for so many years. You think you can all of a sudden tell God it ain't going to be his way when he get ready to change it. That's what they doing. That's why the Lord say this like this. Psalm 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage mm -hmm. and the people imagine the vain thing? Now the heathen mean nations and they raging against God. This is at the second coming of Jesus. They going to try to stick their chest out and deal with him. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine vain thing. It is vain to think you can overcome God. It is vain to think you got some weapons that you can deal with the creator with. Go ahead. The kings of the earth set themselves. See, they set themselves. The kings of the earth. That's why if there's any kings that got some sense, you better drop it at this time. Go ahead. And the rulers take counsel together uh -huh. against the Lord and against his anointing. Oh, they, they set themselves. That means, look, we're going to deal with this. And they take counsel together. That means they're going to be conversating with one another on how to topple God. See, Pharaoh thought he could beat God. He couldn't believe it was somebody bigger than him. He couldn't believe that. That's why he kept going. He was the man for the job. See, it wasn't, it wasn't hard for the Lord to harden his heart because he was too puffed up. He couldn't believe nobody because he went on so long. Pharaoh, Egypt had, had great dynasty, pharaohs before him. He couldn't believe nobody was coming along, especially out the sky blue. He didn't see nobody but Moses. Moses talking about this guy. Give me a break, Moses. He figured it's a fairy tale, just like people think what we reading in the Bible is a fairy tale. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the father and the son, against the Lord and against his anointing. See, if they want to do things their way at this time, they fed up with the way man been doing it. They said, look, we're going to make some changes. Not in here. That's what man is telling God. You ain't going to make no changes around here. We run this. That's the way man looking at it. Verse 3. Let us break their bands asunder. See, they said, we don't need God. Let's deal with this dynamic duo, the father and the son. We can take them. Let's break their bands asunder. Go ahead. And cast away their cords from us. That's a big joke. We don't need God. What, what do God think about it? Verse 4. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Told you it was a big joke. The Lord going to even laugh at them. The Lord going to be like, are you kidding me? What's on your mind? They think they can take God down. He said, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. He going to laugh at them. He's, father and son probably going to be joking. Do you see, you see what they doing? Before they smack him upside the head, they going to have a good laugh about it. Go ahead. The Lord shall have them in derision. Uh -huh. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. Then he going to deal with them in his wrath. He going to laugh first. It's a joke. Man's weapons of war versus the Lord. That's a joke. 
Go ahead. And vex them in his sore displeasure. Uh-huh. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill. See, that's what it's all about. Because they trying to stop the Lord from running things his way. They trying to stop the Lord from bringing his chosen people back to the promised land, which he is determined to do, and ruling in Jerusalem and ruling the whole earth from Jerusalem. They going to stop that. No. He gonna, God going to give them a chance to accept it, too. Look, this is we going we, we getting ready to do some. You got to let my people go that they can serve me. No, they ain't going to do it. So he said, look. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. You know, it's going to happen the way it's going to happen. Now, this is prophesy of the end. Now, we're going to go to the end. But before we go to Revelation 16, look at Revelation 6. I'm going to throw this in here because man is going to be using his weapons against God's servants prior to God showing up. That's why God got to show up because he hurting God's servants bad. Revelation 6. Then when God show up, he's going to try to use the weapons on God. Notice what's going on. People talking about a rapture. Look, saints going to get killed before God show up. That's what we got to get ready for now. We can't have no small things, let alone standing in line where you have to give your life up for serving God. Revelation 6 and 8. Go ahead. And I look. And behold, a pale horse. See, this is doing great tribulation. This is how great tribulation is going to be going down. Remember, it's going to be a time of trouble like it never was. All that's leading to the Lord peeling the sky back and coming, and man going to get together and try to fight him. Great tribulation is leading us to that final battle. And they're going to be using their weapons against God's people up until that point. He says, a pale horse, this is the Antichrist. Go ahead. And his name that sat on him was death. Uh-huh. And hell followed with him. Oh, this is not good. Go ahead. And power was given unto him, uh, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Now, this wicked system got complete power over the fourth part of the earth. That's a great portion. That's a quarter. Got complete power. Got some power everywhere, but got complete control. Because they knocking people out with these weapons they got. This is the Gentiles. Go ahead. To kill with swords. Oh, uh, uh, you see how he doing? He got so much power, he can kill you any way he wants to, and they're going to be killing God's saints. He can kill you with the sword. See, that's a weapon. Go ahead. And with hunger. And he can starve you if he choose. Go ahead. And with death. And with, he can just kill you, period. Go ahead. And with the beast of the earth. And he can put you in a arena with some lions. And let them tear you to pieces. They're going to be doing this kind of stuff, even to God's people. So you see why God got to intervene. And then when God intervened, they're going to try to fight him. But notice what's happening. Who who they killing? Two, verse 9. And when he opened this fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Oh, you mean people didn't get raptured? They getting slain because they believe the word? That's right. Go ahead. And for the testimony which they held. Uh-huh. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So man going to be using these weapons to the end, even against God's servant. That's why he said they're going to kill you with the sword. Now, go to Revelation 16. Back on track with where we was going. Revelation 16. I just wanted to throw that in there because... They're going to be doing God's service in before God intervene. But before they get ready to destroy us all, God going to intervene. 16 and verse 12. Revelation 16 and 12. Go ahead. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Mm -hmm. And the water thereof was dried up. Mm -hmm. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. See, the Lord said, again, I told you, they fighting one another at first. The big country starting to fight one another. This is going to be west against east. That's why the Lord got Russia as a holdout. They won't join in totally with the West and go along with all their systems. And when the beast and the false prophet get rolling out of Western Europe, take over the promised land, which we know they're going to do, then Russia is going to be God's counterbalance. They, it's just like, hey, the Lord can use anybody. The Lord, gonna, that's why the Lord made sure Russia is still around and strong. That's why I understand why Hitler was on the brink of wiping Russia out. The Lord made sure it didn't happen because they, they wouldn't have been no good 
at this time. And he was on the brink of knocking them out. But all of a sudden, winter set in. He couldn't do nothing. But the Lord made sure that happened because the Lord going to use them at the end. That's who he's talking about, these kings of the east. See, and that's why Russia didn't got, it ain't no coincidence that Russia is a powerhouse. It's no coincidence. And he's going to use them to come against you. That's why Isaiah 13 said they come from a far country, even the end of the earth, with the weapons of the Lord's indignation. Even though they don't know the Lord, the Lord use anybody. And he's going to make them go at one another. Then he's going to have to beat them all because they're all crazy. He's going to have to beat them all in the end because when he intervened, before they get ready to push the button, he intervened, they all going to stop and say, wait a minute. Let's fight him. Why are we fighting each other? Let's fight. Look, this is, we run this earth. We fighting each other. We got to fight him. That's what they're going to do. Lord going to show up just in time. So he said that the kings of the east might be prepared. That's Russia and China and all their allies. Then what the west do? 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon mm -hmm. and out of the mouth of the beast uh -huh. and out of the mouth of the false prophet. This is the religious organization in the West with their with they armies. Go ahead. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles mm -hmm. which go forth unto the kings of the earth. See, it's, it's going forth to the kings of the earth to do what? And of the whole world mm -hmm. to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. You mean this is how it's going to end? That great day, of, that battle to gather all the nations to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Why we don't know this in the average church? This is how it's going to end. There's no rapture in here. This is a final battle to determine who going to run the earth. Like he said in Joel, it's the valley of decision. We're going to decide it here and now, God is saying. We're going to decide it right now. He got them all in one place, the valley of Jehoshaphat, better known as Armageddon. So he got the whole world there. All these nations don't know they're gearing up for a battle with God. 14 said, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. We talking war. We talking man's weapons of war versus the Lord. Notice, they all there and what happened right at that moment before they lose their mind and kill us all. 16. Read 15, I'm sorry. Behold, I come as a thief. Be blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment. Oh, right then. Notice Jesus coming. He done got him there for the battle. And now, behold, I come as a thief. It's going to be a shock to all of them. Only people won't be shocked would be people like us who read and believe this now. We're we going to know when the Lord about to step in. The Lord said all of a sudden, that's when he is going to jump in the fray. I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments. Lest what? Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Uh-huh. What he doing though? And he gathered them together into a place ca called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. See, he got them all down at Armageddon. See, this is the battle at Armageddon. But don't nobody tell you the Lord is fighting the battle at Armageddon. He come as a thief and he going to deal with man. Go to 17. Revelation 17. Next chapter. I mean, this is clear cut, brothers and sisters. This is how this story going to end. And there's no coincidence the man got all these weapons for this exact time. No coincidence. 17 and 12. Go ahead. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. See, this is on the west side. The western hemisphere. See, the east is going to be who the Lord used to bring on the west to instigate this thing to get them all down in Armageddon. But the West is the beast and the false prophet. That's who Satan really working with. The Lord more so working with Russia, but it ain't going to matter. The Lord going to whip them all in the end. He's going to even beat up on Russia a little bit. So he said, and the ten horns which I saw us are ten kings, which do what? Which have received no kingdom as yet, uh -huh. but received power as kings one hour with the beast. See, one hour with the beast. It's a set time. That's how the beast going to be strong. That's how... This Western Hemisphere is going to be strong. They got 10 nations on their side. This is Western Europe. 
the European Economic Community, which is really the revived Roman Empire. So 10 nations going to join themselves together. What they going to do? 13. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. See, they going to lend their power and strength to the beast. They 10 sovereign nations, but they going to operate as one under this two-headed system, the beast and the false prophet, which is the revived Roman Empire, which is also called the beast. But they're going to give their power to them. These have one mind shall give their power and strength unto the beast. More importantly, what? These shall make war with the land. Why don't nobody tell you that? Tell, why don't people tell you, tell your neighbor that? These shall make war with the lamb, neighbor. Don't nobody know it. This is telling you some people are going to make war with Jesus, and you go to church and don't know that. You waiting on a rapture. You didn't miss the boat. These shall make war with the land. Isn't the title of the lesson, Man's Weapons of War Versus the Lord? Obviously, they're going to make war with the lamb. They think they got some weapons that can handle the lamb, don't they? That's what deceived them. These weapons they got, they think they can handle anything. If you don't like it, we'll bomb you. You don't do what we say, we'll bomb you. You make us mad, we'll bomb you. And make us real mad, we'll hit you with a big bomb. They think they can handle it. Read 14 again. These shall make war with the lamb. These shall make war with the lamb. The lamb is Jesus. We all know that. Go ahead. And the lamb shall overcome them. Duh. Well, was, he, was that, is that a shock? Because mm -hmm. we already read the Lord is a man of war. But evidently they didn't get that memo. They trying to fight him. These shall make war with the lamb. See, they, they, they mistook Jesus. They forgot that the Bible said he's the lamb to die for our sins. He's the lion to kill your butt. They forgot that part. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them because he got a new attitude now. I told you, you'd be shocked. You go to the zoo, and you see a lamb all of a sudden snapping the lions around. That's a new, they gave him, they gave him some type of drugs or something. He jumped in the lion cage. Shut up and sit down. Be like, what kind of lamb is that? Jesus. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. Why? Who is the lamb? For he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. See, he's the real Lord of lords and king of kings, and this whose side we want to be on, called, chosen, and faithful. Keep your finger in Revelation. We're going to come right back. Flip over to Habakkuk in the Old Testament, the third chapter. Toward the end of the Old Testament, Habakkuk, right after Jonah and Micah, all of that toward the end. Nahum, then after Nahum, you got Habakkuk between hey, Nahum and Zephaniah. Habakkuk, these books a lot of people don't even know about. But it's telling you the same story. The whole Bible telling you. That's why we read it here a little and there, a little line upon line. Precept upon precept. Habakkuk 3. We're going to go back to Revelation. And we're going to wrap it up. 3 and verse 9. We just read that they're going to make war with the lamb. That means the lamb got to show up. But we read when the lamb is showing up, the sky going to roll back. Sun and the moon going to get dark. Here comes Jesus. That's why the, the nation is going to be mourned. And then they're going to get together and say, well, look, we got to deal with him. Habakkuk. Three and nine. Go ahead. The bow is made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribe. Uh -huh. Even thy word, Selah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. See, talking to the Lord. He said, your bow was made quite naked, Lord. The Lord, he got a sword too. But he don't need no physical sword. All he got to do is tell you with his mouth what he want to happen. Because he God. Ten. The mountain saw thee. And they trembled. Mm -hmm. And the, the overflowing of the water passed by. Uh -huh. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. Uh -huh. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. There go that sign. That's the sign of Jesus coming, right? Every time. We read in Matthew 24. We read in Joel 3. We read in Habakkuk 3. That's how you do. You put the piece together. You know what's going on. Not, not, even, not even a chance is wrong. 
You ain't even got to guess about it. The sun and the moon stood still and this happened. So we know the Lord is coming back and getting ready to do some damage. But man and his weapons are going to try to make war against him. The sun and the moon stood still in the habitation. Go ahead. At the light of the... Uh, uh, at the light of thine arrows, they went. Uh-huh. And at the shining of thy glittering spirit. See, the Lord coming to do some damage. This is Jesus coming. It is sad that don't nobody know that Jesus is coming to take over this world and man going to try to fight him to stop him. That is so clear in the Bible and we don't know it. But we too busy trying to go to heaven and keep eating pork on the way. But go ahead. Thou didn't march through the land in indignation. Uh-huh. Thou didn't thresh the heathen in anger. See, he getting ready to thresh the heathen, heathen mean nations, in anger. Go ahead. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. It's always about his people. It's about his elect. He got to fix that. And everybody got to understand that. Other nations got to believe and get on board with that. That's what he doing. For his people, his elect. Go ahead. Even for the... Even for salvation with thine anointing, mm -hmm. thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. He gonna wound the head. He Lord know how to bust heads, don't he? He gonna wound the head out of the house of the wicked by doing what? By discovering the foundation unto the neck. You heard the saying, "Heads gonna roll." Well, Lord know how to do that. He's a man of war. What else? Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Mm -hmm. They came out of the whirlwind and scattered me. Mm -hmm. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. See, they going to try to come out against the Lord. And they beating the poor down as we speak. Go ahead. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, mm -hmm. through the heap of great water. Go ahead. When I heard my belly tremble. Now, my... Rebecca say, he said he heard all this drama that the Lord getting ready to bring when he come back and destroy man, it's going to be a devastating day. Rebecca got scared. He said, I started trembling when I got this message. When I heard my belly trembled. And what else? My lips quivered at the voice. My lips quivered at the voice. Go ahead. Rottenness entered into my bones. He said, rottenness in it. I got scared. I hope I'm worthy to not get killed at this day. Go ahead. And I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. He said, and I trembled in myself. I hope I just be sleep, Lord, when you do all this. This is not going to be pretty at all. Go ahead. When he cometh up unto the people, uh -huh. he will invade them with his truth. That's what the Lord is doing. He coming up unto the people. He is invading the earth with his troops, and they're going to look at it as such and try to fight him with these weapons they got. Let's go back to Revelation, Revelation 19. Let's look at this evasion with his troops. This is for real. How people have missed this is amazing when it's the whole punchline of the Bible. You mean you didn't miss the punchline? How the heck you missed the punchline? This is what it's all about. You got, and the Bible is here. Everybody got it, but... Remember the first sign Jesus gave you is beware of false prophets. Beware of them coming in his name, deceiving many. That's why. That's how you missed the punchline. Nobody giving it to you. Revelation 19 and 11. Go ahead. And I saw heaven open. Uh-huh. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Now the sky rolled back. He's about to invade with his troops. This is it. Sun and the moon got dark. He said, I saw heaven open and a white horse, and he that sat on was faithful and true. And what he doing? And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. In righteousness, he wraps us to heaven. Mm -hmm. Didn't say that. Don't nobody know what Jesus is doing. The Bible trying to give you some insight, though. And in righteousness, because God is right with what he do. See, God can make war, but he righteous when he do it. He know who to kill. He ain't going to make no mistake. Man go to killing, trying to kill somebody. He been to kill the wrong person. He been to kill... Somebody that's righteous or got out of line himself. Like David was trying about to go kill Nabal, even though he might deserve to die. It wasn't for David to kill him. So he stopped. He took heed to the warning that he got from the woman. He stopped. He didn't kill him. But God, he know who to kill and when to kill him. So that's why he said in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. We know that he's a man of war. And they going, he making war. Why do you think he making war? Because they making war against him. 11, uh, 12, go ahead. 
His eyes were as a flame of fire, mm -hmm. and on his head were many crowns. Many crowns. Go ahead. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Signify killing he doing. Go ahead. And his name is called the Word of God. That's none other than Jesus. In the beginning, he was in the beginning with the Father. Go ahead. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Oh, he bringing armies with him. Didn't Habakkuk tell you he going to invade them with his troops? He ain't coming by himself. If he wanted to, I'm sure he could. But the Lord wanted to show you this is a real battle. I got an army too. He bringing all them angels with him. That's why Matthew 25 said, when the Lord cometh in the glory of his Father and all the holy angels with him, they coming with him. That's his troops. He going to have two armies like, like Jacob had. Call it Manahanim in uh, Genesis. Because not only he going to have all them angels, the Lord going to make sure the saints that's worthy be with him too. They going to meet him as he's on his way. That's what people call a rapture. Now the saints, the dead saints and the living ones going to rise and meet the Lord right up there in the clouds as he's approaching. And they all coming down. In. So now he got two armies. That's why I said here, it said, and the armies which were in heaven, it's the ones in heaven, followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, clean and white. Go ahead, 15. And out of his mouth goes the sharp sword. Uh-huh. That with it he should smite the nation. See, he got a sword, but it's just his mouth. That's all he got to do is say it. It's going to happen. All he got to do is speak it. Go ahead. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. And he about to rule. Now, he said he set his king on his holy hill. Go ahead. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. This is serious stuff. He's killing like it's no tomorrow. Go ahead. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. Same thing we read in Revelation 17. When the ten nations come up and fight the lamb, it said the lamb go overcome them for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. I mean, you cannot miss this if you just read the Bible. But I know somebody got to teach it. But even if you read and just reading on your own, it seems like you should be able to see this. Go ahead. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, mm -hmm. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, uh -huh. that ye may eat the flesh of kings, mm -hmm. and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them. See, it's going to be a lot of flesh to eat, because it's going to be death all over. Go ahead. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, mm -hmm. both small and great. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse uh -huh. and against his army. Go ahead. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. See, again, they trying to fight the Lord, though. That's why the title is Man's Weapons of War versus the Lord. He got all these weapons and he going to try to use them against God himself. So that's why he said in verse 19, I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. We talking about man fighting the Lord and don't nobody even have a clue. And people say they believe in Jesus. And you don't have a clue what Jesus is about to do to this earth. And they're going to try to fight him. Go ahead, 20 again. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, mm -hmm. with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. That's the two leaders, the, the, the military man and the religious leader. That's on the western side. That's coming out of Rome. They're going to eventually move to Jerusalem, and that's when it's going to hit the fan. The beast and the false prophet, two men. The false prophet doing miracles, making people believe on him. And deceiving people, making them take the mark of the beast. This all going on during tribulation. But remember, the Lord coming back at the end of tribulation. The sun going to get dark and the moon not going to shine. So these two individuals finished uh, verse 20. With which you deceived them that have received the mark of the beast mm -hmm. and them that worshiped his image. Talking about those miracles, but go ahead. These both was cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. See, Jesus is going to put them in the lake of fire immediately. They ain't even going to wait till judgment. They too dirty. 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. Everybody else going to get killed a natural death. He going to burn them up with fire. They going to die and wait on judgment to be resurrected. 
and get their reward, which ain't going to be good from the looks of this. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat on the horse. Go ahead. Which sword proceeded out of his mouth. Uh -huh. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And all the fowls ate them up. Now, go to uh, Zechariah 14. Back to the Old Testament. See, this is all over the Bible. See, we want to just make sure we're on the right side at this time. You're going to have to choose whether you're going to be on man's side with his weapons he got on the Lord's side where no weapon form going to prosper. Zechariah, back to the end, toward the end of the Old Testament, we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Zechariah 14 and verse 3. Told you the Lord is a man of war for real. Zechariah 14 and 3. Go ahead. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations mm -hmm. as when he fought in the day of battle. See, the Lord going to fight, brother and sister. This is at the end, too. Go ahead. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. See, this Jesus, Jesus, Acts the first chapter. This is exactly the mountain Jesus went back to heaven from. If you read Acts the first chapter, he was with the 11 apostles and he all of a sudden told them, look, he, he's about to leave. He gave him some final instruction. He ascended up in a cloud. He was on the Mount of Olives. I say when they left and went back to Jerusalem, they left from the Mount of Olives, which is right outside Jerusalem. And the angel said, this same Jesus who left, why y'all gazing up looking at him as he was going to heaven? He coming back the exact same way. And I mean the exact same way to the same mountain. That's why I said, and his feet shall stand that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is where? Which is before Jerusalem on the east. Uh-huh. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst of the thereof toward the east and toward the west. Mm -hmm. And there shall be a very great valley. Mm -hmm. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north. Uh-huh. And half of it toward the south. See, he's going to hit that mountain. It's going to split. It's going to be an earthquake like you ain't seen. Go ahead. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountain, mm -hmm. for the valley of the mountain shall reach unto Azel. Of course, when the sky rolled back and all of a sudden all these immortals hit that mountain, people going to be running, heading for the hills. Go ahead. That's what Revelation 6 tells you. We would have kept reading when we was there. It tell you when the Lord peeled that sky back, that people going to be hiding in mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from, from the face of him sitting on the throne and the wrath of the Lamb. So he said, they fleeing, they running. He said, yeah, you're going to flee like as you fled from before what? Finish verse 5. Like as he fled from before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, king of Judah. Uh-huh. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Notice he said, the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints. That's that other army I was telling you about. This is the ones, the saints are the ones that met him in the air in 1 Thessalonians 4. People think that's a rapture. No, that's just so you can be with the Lord as he's on his way. Tribulation's over with. See, there's no secret rapture to get you away from tribulation. What they call the secret rapture is after tribulation. That's why you read 1 Thessalonians 4, where they get it from. The trumpet is sounding everything. The trumpet announced Jesus coming. And this, that's why the saints didn't go to heaven. They met him in the clouds in the air as he was making his final descent. Met him right in the clouds. We can see the clouds. You're in the airplane, you be over the clouds. That's where they met him at, in the clouds. And that him and those two armies, the angels and the saints, all hit that mountain together. That's why he said, the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. We saw he coming with an army from heaven, but also the saints on the earth going to meet him, those that's living and those that have died. Skip down now to verse 12, and let's see what's going on when him and the saints hit that mountain. Go ahead. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Oh, he's going to put a hurting on them. The Lord know how to plague you. Just like he killed that whole Assyrian army, 185,000, with one angel. The Lord going to plague man to death right here. Go ahead. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Can you imagine that? It's hot in the kitchen when that happened, brother and sister. But we know the Lord. It said Jesus. People don't understand this is for real. It said Jesus coming in flame and fire. I mean, it's going to be some heat. It's going to be so much heat. You ain't going to be able to hit the ground if you're not on God's side. You ain't going to even be able to hit the ground before your flesh is melting off you. That's some serious heat. That's what it said, right? 
Tell your neighbor that. It said, their flesh, read that again, that part. <coughs> their, their flesh, flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. That's that mean. That's quick, brothers and sisters. You still stand on your feet, your flesh is melting. You ain't even had time to hit the ground. Flesh dripping off you. Lord, bring the heat, baby. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet. What else? And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. See, their eyes sockets is melting. Go ahead. And their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. Yeah, it's going to be fighting all over. And the Lord going to have his people do some fighting then. Just like Jesus said, if it was in Pilate, to Pilate in John 18, he said, look, if it, wasn't, if it was time for my kingdom, me and my servants would fight. Where well, they going to fight now. It's time at this time. Great tomorrow from the Lord shall be among them and what? And they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor. Well, that's what's going on leading up to the Lord coming. Neighbor against neighbor, kingdom against kingdom, nation against kingdom. But the Lord going to take it over from there. Go ahead. And his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Uh-huh. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. Oh, but he bringing Judah back from slavery, and they going to end up doing some fight. See, the Lord going to teach man, really, that he do not know how to fight. He going to show, man, you don't know how to fight. Sit your butt down. Your weapons don't can't prosper against me. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. Go ahead. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. Uh -huh. Gold and silver and apparel and great abundance. And he taking all the wealth from the Gentiles and going to give it to his people. Only those worthy that's not Israel, they will be with them. But he taking the wealth from the Gentiles and Israel going to have it all. Just like when Israel, when he, he took the wealth from the Egyptians, when he humbled Egypt and Pharaoh, he took all their wealth. Israel left with had all kind of gold and everything. They messed that up by making a golden calf. That shows you how crazy we can get. But they had all that gold to make it with. Sometimes you get too much prosperity, you can't stand it. You, it'll mess you up. That's why the Lord can't, people be talking, well, I wish I had a little more money. Now you, you probably destroy yourself. You had too much money. I hit the lotto. Yeah, you'd be out the back door. We'd be looking for you. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be back to class. I had a few things to do. You know, I got a few things. I'm taking care of something. I'm going to get back. Yeah, okay. He said, Judah going to fight at Jerusalem. Now go to Jeremiah 51. We almost done. Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah 51. Pick it up at verse 17. Go ahead. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Uh -huh. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. See, people worshiping these graven images that roamed and gave us these statues of Mary and all the so-called saints and Jesus, they are foolish. They like barbarians. How can you do that when the Lord warns you not to do it? Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the what? Graven image. Graven image. Go ahead. For his molten image is falsehood. It's a lie. Go ahead. And there is no breath in them. Yeah, ain't no breath in it. You, you pray to a piece of rock, and people pray to these statues. They pray to them. You are brutish. You like a barbarian believing that's believing in that stuff. Go ahead. They are vanity. They are vanity. What else? The work of error. The work of errors. Go ahead. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. When the Lord said, when I come back, I'm on, I'm on, I'm going to abolish all these idols. They're going to perish. Go ahead. The portion of Jacob is not like See, them. God, Israel's God. Our God is not like these idols. We talking about the living God. We ain't talking about, see, an idol can't do nothing for you. But our God, he can make some war, brothers and sisters. And he going to show man about it. So the portion of Jacob, Jacob's God is not like that. Go ahead. For he is the former of all things. That's right. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Uh-huh. And the Lord of hosts is his name. See, the Lord of hosts, is, that's why everything centered around Israel. He said he's going to gather them and bring them back. We just read when he had a flesh dripping off people, he's going to have his true servants, the true Jews, Judah, going to fight at Jerusalem. He's going to have them fighting, checking people. Even Jesus had to be from the tribe of Judah. So when Jesus fight, that's Judah fighting right there. That's why he's called the lion of the tribe of Judah. But now, go ahead, verse 20. 
There are my battle axe and weapons of war. See, the Lord said, look, his people is his battle axe and weapon of war. He's going to use his people on the world. That's what all this is about, him getting his people back. He said, you are my battle axe and weapon of war. Go ahead. And with thee will I break in pieces the nation. And with thee, he using his own people, Israel. Because Israel going to run it from now on. He said, with thee, I'm going to break in pieces the nation. We talking about the nations on this earth. Go ahead. And with thee will I destroy a kingdom. He going to destroy the kingdom. With thee, go ahead. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. He breaking it all down. It ain't going to be no more fighting when the Lord get through because the Lord is a man of war. They ain't going to want to think about no war. A weapon? No, sir. But right now, that's all they thinking about. That's all on their mind. Get some weapons. Get some weapons. Like he said, turn your pruning hooks into swords. And what he, the other thing, I forgot the name. He said, turn it into spears. Your plowshares in the spears. Make weapons, make weapons. But now after the Lord show them how to really fight, they ain't going to want to do it no more. He said, with thee I will break in pieces the horse and the rider, and with thee what? Will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. Like he did Pharaoh, go ahead. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. Man and woman, go ahead. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. He ain't no respecter, go ahead. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. Go ahead. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. Uh -huh. And with thee will I break in pieces the husband man and his yoke of oxen. Uh -huh. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. Lord know how to break in pieces, don't he? <laughs> Go ahead. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight. Notice it's all Lord. about Zion, the promised land, because that's what he's going to take over and rule from there. Hosea 2, we almost done now. Hosea 2, which is right after Daniel. See, people ain't used to reading the Bible. They come here for the first time, they be lost. They can't even keep up with no scriptures. They be like, I just sit there and listen. By the time they get to the Bible, we three scriptures later, by the time they get to the one scripture. Because we ain't used to reading the Bible. But you catch on. That's why I had to tell some people, just keep your finger in the beginning and where you can look where the book's at and find the page number to the book. Got to teach them how to navigate the Bible because preachers don't have not did that. Hosea 2 and 14, this is what the Lord is going to do at the end and it all centers around Israel. That's why he said, with thee, I'm going to break in pieces. You my battle axe and weapon of war. That's what he's doing all this for, his elect. 2 and 14, go ahead. Therefore, behold, I will allure her mm -hmm. and bring her into the wilderness uh -huh. and speak comfortably into That's her. That's what the Lord, he punishing Israel. He been punishing Israel all this time, whoop, whooping us, sent us into slavery. But in the end, he's going to bring us back. He said, therefore, will I allure her and bring her into the wilderness. Because that's where we got to go before we go to the promised land. And speak comfortably unto her. Verse 18. Go ahead. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beast of the field. See, even the beast not going to harm nobody. He bringing Israel home. He going to make a covenant with them with the beast of the field. And what else? And with the fowls of heaven. And what else? And with the creeper things of the ground. And what else and, he going to do? And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth. And will make them to lie down safe. Oh, he going to break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth. He going to break it, brother and sister. Because when the Lord get through fighting, ain't going to be nobody to lift their head up and want to talk about war no more. Let alone do it. He going to break the bow and the sword. Right now, you still got bows and swords, right? Mm -hmm. You still got all kind of weapons, even weapons of mass destruction. See, once man see that that didn't help him, they're going to be educated. They're going to say, ain't no need going that route no more. We had the biggest weapon on the planet, and they couldn't do nothing against that guy. Skip it. They're going to be done with it. See, right now they arm and arm and arm. When the Lord get through it, they're going to say, uh-uh. Somebody mentioned, shh, don't talk about no weapons. It ain't going to help you. That dude is crazy over there. Did you see what he did? He said, look, I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth. We know this haven't happened yet. You got some preachers lying through their teeth talking about, well, you know, really, they talking about the kingdom coming, really the kingdom coming. They get messed up on a couple of verses, try to just talk kind of spiritual 
about the kingdom coming. You know, we represent the kingdom, so I understand that. So in that sense, yeah, God's kingdom representatives are here right now. We're telling you about it right now. But the kingdom is not here physically because if it was here physically, God would be ruling. It would be done according to his will, and it wouldn't be this fighting. When the kingdom comes physically, ain't going to be no more fighting because God going to be in Beat them down. Do we see that the battle, that God has broken the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth? That hasn't happened yet, have it? And do we see that Israel or anybody, for that matter, is lying down, is, is lying down safely, is peaceful? Ain't no peace over in the promised land. That's why we know they ain't the Jews, because when the true Judah go home, there will be nothing but peace. You'll be able to lie down safely. You ain't got to worry about nobody coming to bomb in you. You ain't got to worry about nobody throwing a pop bottle over there with a bomb in it. You ain't got to worry about that. You ain't got to worry about no, like that happened in Boston, you ain't got to worry about no bomb at no marathon going off. You ain't got to worry about none of that because he said he's going to make you lie down safely. going to be nothing but peace. No more battle. Let's go to... Uh, Zechariah 9. Man's weapons of war versus the Lord. It, it, they don't have a prayer. Not even a Hail Mary. Zechariah 9 and verse 9. Zechariah 9 and verse 9. He's going to tell you again. Go ahead. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. That's Jesus. Go ahead. Lowly and riding upon an ass. Uh -huh. and upon a coat, the foal of an ass. See, that's how you get twofold on Jesus. See, right here in these two verses, you got his first coming and his second coming right here together. That's why the apostles asked the question, what's going to be the sign of your coming at the end of the world? They knew it had to be, he had to make two comings because he couldn't do everything the first coming because of what? He had to die. Being that he had to die, he couldn't complete his mission. So he got twofold mission. So right before he died, he went into Jerusalem on this donkey. And it was a big uproar. Because he's a great king, but he come in on a donkey, not in a, a big golden chariot. But it was a big uproar. People were shook up. So he said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly, though, he was humble. He didn't come to Take no kingdom at that day he came to be the lamb and die for us. That's real humble. Lowly, riding upon an ass and a coat to fold. That's what Jesus did. Read it in Matthew, I think, 21. He went into Jerusalem right before he died. He went this way. But then, at his second coming, he's going to do what verse 10 said. That's just both his comings, right in these two verses. Because it's him doing it. That's all you need to know. Verse 10. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim. See, he didn't do that his first time. Go ahead. And the horse from Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And the battle bow shall be cut off. We talking about no more fighting. Go ahead. And he shall speak peace unto the heathen. And the heathen that he don't kill, he going to speak peace to them. That's why he let you know other nations going, people from other nations going to get spared and get salvation. He going to speak peace to the heathen once he beat them down and show them they don't know how to fight. Go ahead. And his domination... Uh, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea. That's worldwide. Go ahead. And from river even to the ends of the earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is. In earth. That's what he's coming to do, brother. So, but he's going to have to fight to accomplish, and man going to fight him. Man going to make him fight. Because man ain't going to give him to him. Don't nobody give up a kingdom they've been ruling. Don't nobody do that. Pharaoh didn't want to even let the slaves go, let alone give his kingdom up. Go to uh, Joel 3. Back to Joel 3. We're going to read this one more time. I'm glad I hadn't had to read it because I couldn't even remember what it said a second ago. So but we're going to read it again. Joel 3 and verse 9 because I want to show you the contrast on how it is now with man's weapons of war. That's what they're doing. That's what they're arming. They're arming. They're arming. And they're going to fight the Lord. But after the fight is over with, they ain't going to think about army no more. Three and nine. Go ahead. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Gentiles run it. That's why he knew who would be in charge of the weapons at this time. That's why the Gentiles watching, making sure 
somebody they don't want to have one don't have it. Proclaim you this among the Gentiles. What? Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Mm -hmm. Let all the men of war draw near. Uh -huh. Get all your men of war. Let them draw near. Go ahead. Let them come up. Uh -huh. Do what else? Beat your plowshares into swords. He said, make all the weapons you can. Get ready for me. I'm coming to town. That's, that's something else. Boy, the Lord is awesome. He going to tell you what he going to do and you can't stop him? He telling you his game plan. He even telling you where you're going to fight at. How, unless you crazy, how you going to be the one fulfill that? I would like to think if I was one of these kings over a nation and had an army, I'd be like, that's one battle we're going to stay out of. Y'all go ahead and handle that. We're going to sit back. But evidently, people think this a fairy tale. But I don't know how. He's telling you exactly how it's going to go down. All the other stuff that came true up until this point, just a little more to go. He said, beat your plowshares into swords and what else? And your pruning hooks into spears. Uh-huh. Let the weak say, I am strong. Don't do nothing but worry about, get you some weapons. Don't worry about feeding people. Let them starve. Beat your plowshares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Go to Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2. And we're going to see what's going to be the difference when he come back. They beating their plowshares in the spear, in the swords, and their pruning hooks into spears. Isaiah 2, now, verse uh, 19. 2 and 19. This is what the Lord going to do when he come, teach them how to fight. This is what he going to do. Go ahead. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth. Oh, when the Lord peeled that sky back and on his way, People going to be running and hiding into the holes. Of the earth. That's what Revelation 6 tells you. Hiders, they're going to run for the hills, head for the hills. Hiders from the wrath of the Lamb and him sitting on the throne. They're going to go in the holes of the rocks into the caves of the earth for what? For the for fear of the Lord. For fear of the Lord. Go ahead. And for the glory of his majesty. When he do what? When he arises to shake terribly the earth. That's what the Lord getting ready to do. He, been, he getting ready to arise to shake terribly the earth. Tell your neighbor that. Shake terribly the earth. But back up. Once he shake terribly the earth and put man in his place, what man going to be thinking about then? Skip back up to verse 4 and go ahead. And he shall judge among the nations. Uh, he going to judge it. when he shake terribly the earth. That's what he coming to do. Judge and make war. Revelation 19 told us. He shall judge among the nations. Go ahead. And shall rebuke many people. Oh, he going to rebuke many people. Go ahead. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares. Wait a minute. It's a big turnaround now. Once he put them in their place, they're going to do just the opposite. They're going to beat their swords into plowshares. And what else? And their spears into puny hooks. they doing the opposite, ain't they? You know what? Because once you get beat down like that, you're going to say, look, once the dust settles, I just want to get something to eat and go home. <laughs> and I get something to eat and go home. That's all they're going to be worried about. Can I just get something to eat? Somebody even mentioned it. Look, don't talk about that. We ain't talking about that. They going to beat their swords in the plowshare and their spears in the prune. That show you we ain't got to this place yet, Howard. And these preach, some of them lying, talking about the kingdom is here. You know, it's here now. The saints is running. The saints ain't running nothing. The nations are beating their plowshares into swords and their pruning hooks into spears now getting ready to fight them. Now, once the Lord fight them, they're going to beat their swords and the plowshares and their spears and the pruning hooks. What else? Neither shall nation. Oh, yeah. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Oh, that's all they doing right now, right? So this not here yet, is it? Mm -hmm. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. We know this is future, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Wait a minute. They ain't going to learn war no more. They ain't going to think about no war. That's all they do now, strategize. They got war rooms. Don't you know that? They got war rooms where they come up with new techniques. That's what they got the army for, to prepare you. Basic training to get you started. Neither shall they learn war anymore. We know that day is not here, but I'm here to tell you it's not far off. Back up and read uh, verse 3. Because once that's over with, they ain't going to think about nothing but find out what the Lord wants. Go ahead. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, uh -huh. to the house of the God 
of Jacob. That's where it's going to be at. Go ahead. And he will teach us his way. Uh huh. And we will walk in his path. Uh huh. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Because he's running shop from there, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. That's real. So I'm going to throw something else in here. Most of y'all have been stayed woke all this time. You can stay woke a little longer. Go to uh, Psalm 46. See, who's at another church? I can say, the Spirit told me that. See, they be talking about the Spirit told me it ain't nowhere to be found in the Bible which was given by the Spirit. The Spirit just said this to me. Well, you can find what the Spirit is saying. All you got to do is read it out the Word. Just like it said in uh, Hebrews 3, the Holy Ghost said, as the Holy Ghost said, and then when he say the Holy Ghost said, you can go back in Psalm 95 and read where the Holy Ghost said it at. And we're going to act like the Spirit is telling us something different, not in the Bible. Somebody is deceived. 46 Psalm.